Hi, I'm Jake from Northside Custom Crafts, and today we're going to do a review of the Laguna IQ CNC machine. Let's do it. I'm going to start this video off by saying that I'm not sponsored by Laguna or anybody else for that matter. It'd be nice, but I'm not. I bought this machine with my own money over a year ago, and I've been using it a lot since then. And um, I still got a lot to learn, but I feel like I can get other people over the intimidation of buying a CNC machine. So with that being said, Laguna's information will be down below. His name is John Carrasco. He's the one that does the Instagram and all the social media for for Laguna and he's also a salesman so give him a call if you have any questions and tell him Jake sent you. So first we're going to talk about the features of the machine and the first thing that stands out is one of the reasons why I bought it was that it comes standard with a three horsepower water-cooled spindle which that means that you can do either 3D work that takes hours and hours and hours or you can do production runs you can make a hundred or something and take all day and this thing's never going to get hot and it's going to last a lot longer than a router and it's a lot quieter too. The, the noisiest thing in this whole shop is the dust collector. You can't even hear the CNC machine run over it. So that brings up dust collection for the machine. My machine came with this dust boot with the four inch port. I don't know if they're doing that now. I bought mine a year ago. You have to ask John about that. But this thing works outstanding. This table over here, I house all the um, camera equipment computers, uh, radio, all that kind of stuff, and it doesn't get dusty, so this works outstanding. The next feature is all of the moving mechanisms on it are done by machine ball screws and linear guide rails, which in layman terms, that just means that's high-end stuff on a small footprint machine. It's, it's very high quality stuff and it makes per for precision cuts. The next thing they did was they put all the electronic equipment separated from the machine so it doesn't get all the vibration and all the bad things that come with vibration. So and you have this over here away from the machine and everything is done with a handheld controller. And you get your jump drive and it just plugs right into there. So a feature to that is pretty handy thing to have with that is my shop is almost 300 foot away from the house so I don't have internet out here so I can go in the house and do the computer work put it on a jump drive and then I come out here and do it and I don't have to have Wi-Fi set up out here which would be nice but I don't have it but my machine will work this machine has a two feet by three feet working area and it it, it comes with aluminum t-slots here with pretty thick wasteboard MDF in between each one and this day this table is made out of solid metal so it it weighs 425 pounds or so somewhere around there I was lucky enough if you, if you watch the unboxing video I had a lift a car lift to lift it and we just moved the table underneath it but you can either do it with the engine hoist or several big dudes can can handle this thing but be sure you have some way to move it around but that's what makes it so great is that it is heavy and it's not going to move around it's not going to flex and you're going to get great cuts with it that's some of the features of the machine so now in good laguna fashion i'm going to do a little project too this is going to be real simple i'm going to show you the software a little bit and how easy it is to have a product and how, and how fast it is i found this piece of scrap wood in the pile and we're going to use it. I'm going to take measurements off of it and I'm going to go to the computer and we're going to make something. So I'll see you at the computer. First thing we're going to do when we open the BCAR Pro is you're going to go to create a new file. Click on that and then we got to put in the dimensions. Now I've already put them in here. The X is 11 and a half and the, the height of it six and three quarters of an inch and the thickness is three quarters of an inch and we set the offsets the x and y datum position to the lower left hand corner so we got that right there and then we have this right here that shows us that's where we're gonna start our machine from we have it on inches and we're gonna click ok now first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some reference lines out here. You just drag 
get your little thing over here and you left click and drag a reference line over here and I'm gonna put it at the center should be five and three quarters so you, you get it close and then you want to blow this up so that'll do a, a finer measure measurement and let's see if it'll do it so there's five and three quarter right there and that's all I need for now is I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller and so we're gonna come over here we're just gonna do a simple text there's this little saying that my daughter likes and I'm gonna make this for her so we come over here to the text and I'm gonna type in the text and we're gonna you can come down here and do all kinds of different fonts see all this and and um, you can do the true type or single line we're just going to do single line for this to make it simple and we're going to apply it so to move this you have to click on it again and move it where you want it and I put that center line on there so we could center the text just the easy way that I do it now we can adjust this we can make it a little bigger, smaller, whatever we want to do. And then we recenter it. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to do the next part of the text. So all you do to, to unhighlight this is just click off of it. And if you want to, you want to highlight it. And then if you want to move it, you, you click it each time. Each time you click it, it'll do something else. Click, click and then we're off of there so I'm gonna do some more text I come over here and then I put the rest of the text first attempt in learning so we're just gonna keep all the text the same just for simplicity and we're gonna apply it and then I can already tell we're gonna have to make this way smaller so we just click on there again and we make it smaller let me make it a little bit smaller some more and again that looks good to me for this demonstration it looks pretty simple so another thing we can do is we can join all these together and you just left click over here and highlight it all then right click it and group objects and now they all go together so we're going to come over here to tool pass right over here and we're going to pin it otherwise it'll keep going away and it, it's kind of difficult so I hit the pin up there and then we'll do a quick engrave just for simplicity sake quick engraving tool pass and we already have the 60 degree bit is what we're going to use but if you want to change whichever bit you want to use on it you just hit select here then it goes over here to all your different your different end mills and v bits and all that kind of different tools that you have but we're already set on the right thing so I'm going to say okay and 0 0.05 inches is about what I want to do for this so we're going to leave the depth there and then we hit calculate So it calculated the toolpath already for us. So we hit close here. And then we want to see what it's going to look like. So this little picture down here it says preview toolpath. We're going to click on that. And you get a screen that looks like this. And right here, the speed of it, we're going to slow it way down so we can actually see how it does. Otherwise, it'll be too fast to, to really be able to see what it's doing. So preview visible toolpaths and hit that so that looks pretty good and we can actually turn this different angles and see what we're doing if it doesn't look right right here it's not right so if you get to this point and it's not right you need to go back and figure out what you did wrong and it's usually pretty obvious what you did wrong so that looks pretty good to me 
So what we're going to do is we're going to close this and we're going to save toolpath and that's right here. Quick engrave one, quick engrave one and we're going to save the toolpath. And I'm going to change it to fail one. And so we save it to your computer and then you put it on a jump drive and then we'll take it out to the CNC machine so here we go so I'm back from the computer and I saved that little simple cut list to this right here and now you just get your handheld controller and there's a slot on the top and you just plug it in first thing we need to do is attach hold this down somehow is is all we need to do and I prefer wedging things and you can use tape or clamps or whatever but I prefer wedging whenever I can so I'm gonna pick the prettiest side of this which is probably like that what I do is I just get a piece of melamine and I have the machine route a uh, grid in here one inch strips and then I know what I, it gives me a good reference of what straight across is and straight across this way is so then I put so then I'll uh I'll screw a straight board down over here so now I have a good reference that's going to be straight that's going to be straight as long as my stock is straight so I'm going to do this I'm going to wedge this over here I'm just going to line it up with the front of the table get my little hammer That's it, it's gonna stay there. So now, first thing you're gonna do is, we're gonna turn the machine on and turn the water on. You never forget to turn the water on or you're gonna ruin your spindle. So we'll turn this on. And we'll turn our water on. You turn on your machine, it wants you to say, it says all access home. So you just hit, okay, here it comes. Next thing we're going to do is hit origin. We're going to hit the origin button and it's going to go to the home place for X and Y. First thing, this program is going to call for a 60 degree bit. So I'm going to go ahead and change the bit. The cool thing about this spindle is it has different size collets. You can change these collets from real tiny to half an inch so that's a pretty good feature too so what we need to do now like on our uh, computer program is we need to find x and y where we're going to start from so the machine knows where we're at so that means that we're going to find we're going to put the tip of this bit right here at the tip of this material and those arrow buttons, there's X plus and X, and then you move it around like that with these buttons right here. I have this set right at the corner of this material. So there's a button right here. That says X, Y equals zero. And that's gonna tell the machine where it's at. It's that easy. So the next thing we need to do is figure out how deep this is so we have our our little tool that we set on our material we plug this into the machine up here we set it under the bit and you hit on off and menu and it'll go down and touch that and that and then the machine will know where the materials at So now the machine knows where to start at the X, the X and Y and the Z. So it knows where it's at this way, it knows where it's at this way, and it knows how deep it is. So now, so we're gonna hit run pause delete to, to find our flash drive. New disk file, we're gonna hit yes. And then we find our file. This should say fail one. Fail one right there. 
So we hit OK. And then we're going to hit OK again, but I'm going to get the dust collection on. Now this, this shouldn't need it. We're just going to, we're going to do it without the dust collection just for this, this demonstration. So you hit go. So here's what we just made. I spent about eight minutes designing this and filming me designing it and <laughs> this three minute cut time. So I'm gonna give this to my daughter and I, I don't know if she's gonna paint it or stain it or whatever she's gonna do or just clear it. But I'm gonna show you a few more examples of what you can do with this, things I've already made and, and some ideas to give you. This particular project right here is a real good example of why CNC is good and the program is good because I've already got the Texas programmed in the computer I've already got where the clock goes and and you turn it around and you you make this spot for the clock mechanism back here and if somebody wants I've done a lot of these for family reunions and they'll raffle them off at their family reunion so all it takes is you take this off and you add whatever te other text you want to do and so you have very little programming time because you've already done it you've already done the work the first time and you might have hours and hours in it the first time but after that it's real simple to not put this on and change it to Texas strong or whatever so this particular material is two by sixes so basically you have a five dollar clock me mechanism five to seven dollar clock mechanism and you by the time you do the milling and everything and you got the stain in the paint let's say at the high end you have ten dollars in this and i sell these for 45 dollars so and then if you're batching them out this thing will make them all day so that's where your money your money gaining back comes into play is is this stuff once you get the programming done <laughs> you, you have to make money after that so that's one example This is another real good example too. It's a picture frame in the cross and you can put Marines or Navy or Army, whatever. I sold all the Marine ones because obviously they're the coolest, but you can put whatever text you want here. It could be a memorial cross. We sold a lot of those. So all it takes is the cross is already in the program. You just change the text and there you go. So there's a little bit of examples of what you can do and kind of the money making side of it. Now VCAR Pro can be intimidating, but I just showed you that you can make a simple sign with no problem in minutes. So, but there's plenty of good YouTube channels. You got Mark Lindsay CNC, Dave Gatton CNC, uh, Javi's Woodshop. I'll put links to all the ones that I know in the link below and you can go check them out. And if this is your first time to see one of my videos, go ahead and hit subscribe. I like it when you do that. If you're interested in getting a CNC machine or just talking about it, go get Get a hold of John in the link below, and we'll see you next time. Y'all be good.